Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's nine o'clock on a Monday, which means it's time for a five by five. Now, this is where I take five subjects related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject. It's always quick. It's always snappy. You never know what you're going to get. And today, today on this week's five by five, I'm going to do a performer special. Not done one of these in a while. So we thought we'd bounce back with another one. I'm going to do a performer special on somebody who I think is probably the best example of a magician's magician in the magic community in 2024. Unfortunately, many years ago, uh, we lost Daryl, who was considered the quintessential magician's magician. But I think that we've got a heir to his throne, somebody who I think is absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, a magician's magician, and that is Nick LaCapo. Now, if you don't know much about Nick, go and check out his interview I did with him a couple of years ago on Talk Magic. Nick is obviously one of the faces of Penguin Magic, and there's a very good chance if you've ever bought something from Penguin, you've seen Nick perform it, you've seen Nick um, explain it. He is one of the best tutors, he is one of the best teachers in magic as far as I'm concerned, but he is also one of the best performers. He performs on stage, he performs close up, he regularly performs all over the world, and he kills audiences every single time. I have been lucky enough to see Nick perform on stage many, many times. He blows me away. The reason I think he's a magician's magician is because he can do everything, he can do it really well, but he just, he's so slick. He is so slick. He looks like a magician. He acts like a magician. He sounds like a magician. He is a magician. He also has this incredible ability to take a trick that he's never seen before and in a very short period of time perform it to a level that he's getting massive, great reactions um, because that's what he does as part of his role in Penguin Magic. He has to learn a trick that somebody else has created. He has to go out and perform it and teach it and he has to get really great reactions so that people want to buy it. That's not an easy thing to do. It's not easy to do with your own trick, let alone somebody else's trick that maybe not... You know, how often have we bought a trick where it doesn't work for you? Or it's a trick that you're not really, you know, you can't really get. Well, he, has, he hasn't got somebody else that can do that for him. He's got to go and do it. The guy is an absolute legend. Well, on this video, I'm going to show you five performances of Nick performing in various different locations. I think most of the performances that I've chosen this time are from various performances at the Magic Castle. And I'm going to tell you about what we can learn from watching those performances. So, without further ado, we're going to get straight into it. And the first piece that you're going to see right now is Nick's floating card routine. So you're going to see a floating card routine. And uh, this is at the Magic Castle. Let's have a look at this. And then after we've looked at it, we'll talk about what we think. <laughs> Okay, I cannot tell you how much I love that routine. Um, I just absolutely love it. I've seen him do it live a few times and it kills every single time. It's his opening routine. When he opens his show, he opens his show with this. And there's a few things that we can learn from watching this. First of all, he comes out, he's likable immediately, but he's doing something that really grabs the attention of the audience. He's not doing a long, boring card trick. He's not spending five minutes talking to the audience. He's not doing something that fails to grab the attention of the audience. He's coming out, and the first thing he's doing is he's floating stuff right in front of people's eyes. And you don't see many people doing the floating card because it's been perceived over the years as something that you see demmed in magic shops places like Las Vegas. But I'm telling you right now, having seen him perform this many, many times to lay people, they freak 
out. I mean, they freak out and then some. Uh, there's something that's like, it, it, doing this routine, first of all, it makes you look like a magician. What says I'm a magician more than floating something? right? It's way more impressive than coming out and spending five minutes having someone pick a card. It's so well thought out, the construction of this routine. It's not too long. It's probably over in about a minute and a half. Uh, it looks really impressive. And the routine builds. He starts off by spinning a card. Then he spins the card again. Then it spins around his body. He finishes off spinning it through the... Uh, through the hoop, it just looks absolutely incredible. But while he's doing it, he's establishing his connection with the audience. He's interacting with the audience. He's making little quips. He's making little jokes. He's getting people to understand his character. He's putting across that he's likable and he's a nice guy, but he's also showing stuff that's really, really interesting and making people want to see more of it. And it's happening right in front of their eyes. The other thing is you can see that the thing's well produced. You can hear the music. The music is well produced. The, the, what he's doing is in time to the music. It's it's interesting. It's it it all is just really well produced. There's nothing else I can say about it. You put the music into context with how he's standing and and how he's moving around the stage and what he says and what he doesn't say. It's been literally tailored down to be the perfect opening routine. Do yourself a favor. Go back and watch it again. Listen to the music and watch how he speaks to the audience. Look at how he stands. Look at how he smiles. Look at how he's engaging each individual person in the audience. This is somebody who, by the end of this routine, has connected with everybody in that theatre. It is an absolute masterclass. Now we're going to move on, and uh, we're going to move on to another routine. Now, this is typically the routine that Nick uses to follow up on the floating card routine. It's a um, routine with a bill. So it's a routine with, uh, with a borrowed bill or a borrowed note. Um, and um, you're going to see it now. And uh, it's a great follow-up to the card routine. We'll talk about why in a second, but first of all, let's have a look at it. This is Nick's version of the floating bill. With 100, uh, who has a bill that I can borrow? Don't everybody grab at once, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> this guy in the back, you guys, this guy's grabbing, maybe. Love the socks, though. Pineapples? Oh, we got a one. <laughs> you borrow one. Hey, we got a 20. All right, all right. Works with any bill, I swear. Uh, no, <laughs> no. the reason you borrow the money, right? Because if it was mine, you guys would all think this is fake, right? And I don't blame it. In fact, that's what I used to use, uh, some sort of fake, phony magic money. But you don't need that when you do this stuff. All you need is a little bit, see if I got any left, yep. A little bit of the invisible magic dust. <laughs> so late shows, okay. <laughs> Now, again, one thing that I've talked about on this channel that's really important to consider when you're framing an act and really important to consider when you're putting an act together is transitions. What do I mean by transitions? How are you going to transition from one piece to another piece? You're starting here. How are you going to go there? Well, in this case, he's done the floating card, which is absolutely amazing, but it's his card. I love the fact that he then says, hey, can I borrow a dollar bill? And he's doing exactly the same thing with the dollar bill. Now, also notice that there's music that's used here as well uh, but the music 
it is is very different and it gives the routine a much different feel the first routine with the music that was picked in the first uh the first performance the root the, the music was almost mystical and playful um and it, it really fit with the floating card with this particular routine this is more of a funny comedy routine and the music fits this perfectly the other thing to consider is again the routining behind the actual trick so first of all it kind of looks like it doesn't float and it sticks to his finger then it starts floating he's got that final moment where it comes up into his hand like that like it builds and that's the whole point when you're when you're working with anything but especially thread when you're working with levitation you want to make sure it builds and this is the perfect follow-on to the first routine because it does build because you're using a borrowed bill but as well as building because you're using a borrowed bill it, the routine builds itself as you're going on and also he's continuing to establish establish his character is continuing to show that he doesn't take himself too seriously this is going to be a fun show but it's also going to be something that you're going to see a lot of visual magic now think about those two routines put together those two routines put together are what three and a half four minutes something like that and at the end of the three and a half four minutes he's he's just ingrained himself into everyone's mind they all see this and they all know this is a show that I want to watch you want to learn how to perform on stage this these performances that I'm sharing with you right now are a masterclass in how to perform on stage how to carry yourself and how to engage with an audience let's move on in the next routine we're going to have a look at something that i've seen nick close with in the past but i've also seen him slot it into various different points in the act as well this is the multiplying bottles let's have a look at this this is a uh, because it's the dollar magic show a world famous bottle and glass trick this is a simple trick it uses very simple props a glass and a bottle the idea of this trick is also very very simple to make the glass travel from this side of the table to this side of the table and make the bottle travel <laughs> i brought an extra one in case that one breaks um the glass will go from here to here the bottle goes from here to here you can't touch them though that's why you have uh, both of these tubes right now before you get started you got to make sure that you're set up correctly <laughs> You gotta be certain that the glass is exactly the same distance from the bottle as the bottle is from the glass. <laughs> Just making sure you guys are still paying attention to that. Alright, here we go, here we go. Here's the glass. Here's the bottle. Watch as they change places. Yup, there's the glass, and there's there's a bottle in there. Thank you. <laughs> Carries like that. Anybody can do that. That's the easy part, though, right? That's the, any, the hard part. Go back. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> you feel bad for me, don't you? <laughs> I should mention this trick's a lot better if you've had what's inside the bottle, right? Uh, if you're still sober, you might not believe it, but it's sick. It's very easy to make them drink. <laughs> Okay, so I've always been a big fan of the multiplying bottles uh, ever since I first saw Tommy Cooper do it all those years ago. Well, uh, I, I, I've, I've been amazed with the multiplying bottles. I, I do it in my own show. Ryland does it in his show. Multiplying bottles is great. And what we have here is somebody taking a trick 
and really stamping his own authority onto it and really stamping his own personality onto it. I love the fact that everything is on one little square table. Uh, normally you see a lot of people doing multiplying bottles and they've got a much longer table. Everything's on one table. It kind of gives it more an impossible feel when the bottles start to appear. But the other thing is, again, listen to the music. That music, I, I, I can imagine that Nick has sat there for hours and days picking the right music for this. It starts off very, very slow. And then towards the end where all the bottles are appearing, it's kicked in and it gets faster and faster and faster and faster. The, the, the tempo of the trick and the tempo of the presentation of the trick is mirrored and dictated by the actual music and how the music increases its tempo as the routine becomes more chaotic. Um, and, and if there's one thing you can learn from watching Nick, it's musicality is so important in an act. Having the correct music and using that music correctly in any act is such an important thing to be able to do. And you see this in this routine, you see it in every routine that Nick does, but this is a perfect, an absolute perfect example. Also notice he's not doing it in kind of, he's doing it in a very quick way. Almost if you're a stage manipulator and you were gonna do the multiplying bo uh, get bottles, this is the way you would do it, right? So it's very, very high tempo, very, very quick, very, very um, um, it, it done in a very different way to how I see the normal multiplying bottle routine done. And, you know, if this doesn't inspire you to learn the multiplying bottles, nothing will. And notice as well, by the way, that a lot of the stuff that you've seen Nick do up until this point, they're classics of magic. You know, the, uh, the floating card, the floating bill, uh, the multiplying bottles, they're classics of magic, but they feel fresh. They feel new. They feel modern the way that Nick performs them. And I suppose the thing that we can learn from that is, is look back in the history books. It's not about the newest, latest, greatest thing. Sometimes it's about the routines that have come from ye uh, years ago that you can adapt and you can help them and make them fit your own act, right? If that makes sense. But we're going to go on to a fourth routine now. And the fourth routine that we're going to go on to is deck under shoe or Nick's version of the, uh, of the card under shoe routine. Uh, which is probably one of my favorite card routines I've ever seen a stage performer do. Let's have a look at this one now. All right, a little trick using uh, two cards. Card, uh, two cards. Card for me, a card for you, sir. My card first. My card first. <laughs> my card will be the Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts will be mine. What is your name? Christian. Christian, where are you from? LA. Oh, I've heard of it. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Queen of Hearts is my card, Christian. Now for yours. I'm just going to riffle through the cards. As I go through, you say stop, we'll get you a card. Now, Christian, I don't want you to think I made you stop here. I can go a little further if you want. Okay. Are you sure? Sure. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> a little further? Couple. Like there? Right there? Yep. Okay. Everybody remember Christian's card. Every, yeah, we'll let everybody take a look at it. In fact, make sure there's no special markings on the back, Christian, to tell me what your card is, okay? <laughs> Stuff isn't easy, <laughs> okay? Your card goes into the center of the pack. It's about middle right there. And it's gonna travel all the way up to the top of the deck. It happens when I flip the magic hair. <laughs> Christian, your card back on top. What? Yeah. It's not all. Your card will now change places with mine on the floor. Happens when I whistle. <laughs> it changes. <laughs> what? Now that was my card, right, which I put down here at the beginning. Does that look familiar? Yes! <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's a good trick, but the guy at the front last show was like, yeah, but how did it stick to the wand? <laughs> what? <laughs> Some of you are still fooled, okay. <laughs> So I'll try to show you how it works. The hard part, of course, is getting Christian's card, not this one, but to slide out of the deck and secretly land underneath my shoe, because that happens really fast and it's hard to see. Uh, so I'll try to slow it down so all you can see exactly what happens. The first thing you gotta do is take Christian's card and place it in the center of the pack. Now this will work, of course, with any card. It doesn't matter. We'll use the nine of hearts. All you gotta do is give the nine a little rub on your leg just by giving it a rub, Christian. It changes, all right? 
Just don't rub, <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> just, no, no, it's okay, just don't rub too hard, right? Because if you do, you can actually get the card to disappear. It doesn't go far though, it just ends up back underneath my foot. Oh. Christian, do you believe this is your card? I do. You do? Sure. You're not from LA. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out, Christian's card, pretty good, pretty good, yes. <laughs> one more time, why not? Or we don't have to, it's okay, we'll do it one more time. Anything under my shoe, Christian? Nice shoes though, right? <laughs> I'm gonna put it there again, <laughs> okay? In fact, we'll make it a little easier on you. We'll leave your card face up in the deck. So not this way, it'll be facing the ceiling, right? So that if it comes to the top, you'll know I can't sneak it up there because it's face up, right? So you can watch the deck, you can watch the shoe or the wand, but whatever you do, don't blink because it happens on the count of one, two, and three. Did you see it go? No. You didn't see it go? No. No, not, not the card, the deck. Do you see the deck? Oh, shit. Do you see the deck? <laughs> you see, the deck, the deck is gone. The, de the deck is gone. But Christian, it didn't go far though. It just ended up back underneath my shoe. No. That would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> really, really good. The thing is, Christian's right here. He's watching so close. There's no way I could have gotten his, the deck underneath my shoe. I had to go one step further. I couldn't get the deck under my shoe. I had to get the deck in my shoe. Now, oh, wait, wait, wait. We did put Christian's card face up in this deck, remember? And it, it is still in there. There is one card reversed in the pack. Christian's two of clubs. Give him a big hand. I remember seeing Nick. I remember seeing Nick teach this on a download on Penguin Magic years ago. And the problem with downloads is a lot of people ignore them. And uh, I think this got good traction at the time, but I think a lot of people ignored it. Uh, but it was a it was a card under shoe routine that Nick was presenting on behalf of Penguin Magic, and it was designed as a close up piece. And you saw Nick going out and getting the uh, uh, the performance footage of it, and and as normal, doing a great job. And I remember thinking at the time that would work really well on stage. And here he is, he's fleshed it out and he's performing it on stage. And it has the power of card under box without needing a table. Uh, this is the best card routine I've ever seen to perform on stage. Uh, notice that you don't need to have the card signed. The way that Nick has structured this whole routine, the cards aren't signed, they don't need to be signed. Notice as well, one thing that you're gonna see over and over again with Nick's performances is routining, and more specifically, how each phase builds. You've got a multi-phase routine here, and it starts very, very simply. It just starts with a you know, revelation of a card, and then it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on, and it gets to a point where decks are vanishing, and going inside shoes and cards are reappearing and as I say it's got a very card in the box feel to it but without being card in the box it's something that you can perform on stage in terms of 50 100 200 people you don't need any props with you other than a deck of cards think about that for a minute you can perform a routine like this on a big stage in front of everybody and have nothing that you need other than a deck of cards and you're good to go I mean, how perfect is that as a routine? Um, have a look at the beats and also look at how Nick's character continues to work with the audience. He's so personable, he's so interactive. Everybody is getting involved. It's not just one person that he's performing for. He's, he's, he's getting everybody in the audience involved with his performance. It's a beautiful thing to see, it really is. And I'll say it again, this routine is one of the best card routines, if not the best card routine I've ever seen for a stage performer. It is absolutely a work of art. So the final routine that we're going to be looking at right now is the bill in um, uh, the billing card. Uh, which is uh, the way that Nick closes his show at the moment, and it's a wonderful closer. Uh, we're going to have a look at that, but first of all, uh, let's have a look at a performance uh, of it. But we'll also give you back your $1 bill, of course. Uh, I just need one thing from you before we go. Before we go, Do you know, do you have any favorite magic words? Well. Wow. Well, no, I was saying, well, the, the hair does count too. Oh, well. Yes. Alamora, that's the most complex one we've had all weekend. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> then you're good. Oh, magic clue, we see the magic words. 
Well, now I'm more. It hasn't gone far. Um, it's disappeared from here. It is slowly rematerializing inside the envelope that I gave you at the beginning of the show. Maybe could you stand up really quick since you're right here? Why not? Come right up here. Stand right here. Just throw that over there. Yeah. Okay. For now, open the envelope. <laughs> inside, <laughs> so good. Have you done this <laughs> Inside, you'll find the bill. Inside the gun. Oh, I misspoke. I misspoke. Can I have that? I didn't mean that the bill would be inside the envelope with the card. I meant the bill would be inside the envelope, inside this like plastic case. Yeah. Inside the card. <laughs> could you could you tear that? Okay. okay. Be careful. Yeah. I keep bringing keep it all the way. Oh. You see something in there? <laughs> <laughs> you see something in there? Here, I'll take it. Oh. Right. oh, I did it. Okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes when I open up this folded one dollar bill. Carrie's initials appear in the face, proving it was the same bill we saw oh, just a moment ago. Me! <laughs> find everybody freaks out! Carrie! Check this out. You're going to go home with the floating bill, and retired at this point, your floating card, and your floating bill. And one more to all of this applause from everybody there. Give her a big round of applause. <laughs> So I remember when Nick showed me this and he was so proud of the method. This is very, very different from a method point of view to anything you've seen before. I know Vanishing Ink have released something in the last year that has a similar feel to this. But Nick's method is very, very different and it's something that he hasn't marketed. What I love about this is that it brings the routine full circle because at the beginning he gives the bag out to somebody. Uh, he also, uh, you know, borrows the bill at the very, very beginning. You know, all of this stuff is done at the very beginning. And at the end of the routine, he brings them up on stage. The bill has vanished. And you've got that lovely moment where he says, hey, it's in the bag. And they bring out of the bag the card and there's nothing else in there. And then when the card is ripped open, the bill is in there. It is absolutely incredible. And I've talked many, many times on this channel about how when you're developing an act and you're structuring an act, you've got to have a beginning and an end. Obviously, that goes without saying. But it's really nice to bring the routine full circle. And that's what's happening here. It opens with one particular thing and then brings the whole thing full circle at the very, very end. It's also probably the best impossible location trick you're ever going to see hang on a minute the card's vanishing and it's appearing and sorry the bill is vanishing and it's appearing inside a card that's inside a plastic frame that's inside a bag that was given out to the audience from the very very beginning of the show what that's impossible that can't be done and it's signed get out of here but that's exactly what we have here. It's such a strong finale. It's one of those routines that you can't really follow from. I know that for a while, Nick was closing the multiplying bottles and now he doesn't. And I think it's probably one of the reasons is he's looked at this routine and he's gone, well, God damn, there's no way I'm going to be able to close with anything else after this. This has to be my closer because this is so strong. And it's also his own... Notice everything that I've talked about. The other thing I want you to notice is Nick has thought about how to perform this. Nick has thought about how to present this to an audience so that it's completely unique to him. A million people do the multiplying bottles. This is his way of doing it. It's very Nick. Uh, a million people will make bills vanish and appear somewhere else. The way that this is done is very Nick, both in terms of presentationally, from a method point of view, the way that everything is structured, the music, the atmosphere, the whole thing is completely unique to Nick. And I suppose if there's one thing that we can learn from watching all of these performances of Nick Lacapo, it's but it's watch how he delivers this magic and how he makes it unique to him, because that is the real magic.
So there you go, guys. That's another video in the bag. Thank you once again for joining me right here on Magic TV. Do me a favor. Let me know in the comments down below. Have you seen Nick Lacapo live? If so, what do you think of his act? I think the guy is genuinely the magician's magician in 2024. And nobody else comes close. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this? Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, if you want to join the Netflix, it's www.thenetrix.com. You can go access it now and see what all the fuss is about. But I will see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.